Okay. Um, there we go. So thank you all for joining me tonight. Um, and as I mentioned before, I'm a little nervous because um, I haven't channeled the librarians in a while. And I haven't really channeled Jesus in a while, but he hangs out a lot. Like people tell me, oh, you must really love Jesus. I'm like, no, he loves me. But he's all right. I like him. <laughs> um, and this is interesting because uh, it's a little bit similar to um, a presentation I gave two years ago at the start of December when the librarians of the Akashic Records, and for those who don't know, the Akashic Library is like the internet that records everything. So us sitting here today, it's being recorded in our personal life books and it's being recorded in history. Um, everything, everything that happens is documented. Um, and there's different branches of the library. So you can only connect, if you go into the library, you can only go into what your frequency can connect you to. So um, like, I like to go in, I'm like, hey, Akashic librarians, I wanna go to the angelic library and they laugh at me and they say, but they have a book we can loan to you to read, to try to get your frequency up enough to go there. Um, so um, today when I went into the library, sorry, backpedaling. So two years ago, the librarians were channeling through me talking about uh, what each and every one of us can do in our daily lives to help heal the planet and raise the frequency. Not like going out and doing anything grand or even doing what I'm doing here, but just in your daily life as you're doing laundry and running your chores, what you can do to impact the planet. Um, at this event, the room was full and it was full of, a lot of them were like, healers and other channelers and uh, even other people who work in the Akashic Library and they were getting very upset. And in fact, they were like arguing with the librarians uh, saying there's no way, you know, and finally the librarians were like, don't you understand? Each and every one of you in this room has the ability to heal your entire planet in an instant with just one thought. Should you truly wish to and should you truly believe you that this was something you could do? And oh my God, they were like screaming at the librarians. Um, and so, I don't know, maybe they weren't. It just felt to me like when the librarians come through, um, I get absorbed into their collective. So I'm like off on the side while they're doing their work as one with them, but I'm not the one doing the speaking. I'm just like holding space for them. So it felt to me like they were screaming. Probably people in the room, if they're watching this video now, they'll go, we weren't screaming, we were just talking, so who knows? But uh, they're like, okay, we're gonna bring someone through who can explain this to you. And the next thing I know, Jesus is right there asking to speak through me. And those of you who read my book have read about this. And up till that moment, like I didn't believe in Jesus. I'm a Unitarian Jew. So I'm like, why do you even want to talk through me? Since then, we've developed a very good friendship and a good relationship. Um, and he likes to speak through me because I have never read the New Testament. I know nothing about Christianity. And that was planned before I came to life, that this would be closed off for me so that I could be a pure conduit with no preconceived thoughts or notions that they could tell me anything and I'll believe it. So I'm not tied to what the New Testament says. I'm tied to what the direct source sources tell me. Um, Jesus is like back now, hardcore, working with a lot of people, not just me. And he's working with uh, people to try to recreate what he did, only all of us are doing it together, not one person. And soon my book, um, uh, 
They're telling me not to self-promote. Okay, I have a book that talks about how he did it, but uh, <laughs> um, but they're telling me. <laughs> yeah, they're like, oh, what are you doing? This is not about you. Get out of there. Get out of there. No one cares about what you're doing. <laughs> and I'm like, but you're the ones writing the book through me. And they're like, shh. Um, <laughs> So, um, I would like to explain, there were different ways to channel, and um, one way is a trans channel. A trans channel is someone who goes completely out of their awareness, out of their body. They have no idea what's happening through them. This is the classic spiritualist style of channeling, and it can be people who passed, you know, some psychic mediums will be or evidential mediums will be trans channels to bring, you know, Aunt Edith or Grandpa, you know, Walter through. Um, and I've, I've worked with some amazing trans channels. The way I channel, um, and there's a number like me as well, I stay in my consciousness, but I step out of the way. Um, and so I hold space for whoever is in me. One way or the other is not better or worse. Both of them require specific skills. Some people, when they're channeling, if they're in awareness, they know they're going to interfere with it. So they want to be out of awareness. And then some people like me, first of all, if there's a party going on in my body, I want to be there. <laughs> um, like people who trans channel, Afterwards, they have to watch a video of what they said because they don't know what they said. Um, although some tell me they do, but you know, with mine, I also, um, you know, I'm a little controlling, and I want to make sure I can trust who comes in my body. I'm also the person I'll like lock my car, even when it's in my driveway, and I live in the woods where no one's around. Like, I don't, I have like zero trust of anything out there unless I'm aware that it's perfect. Even if I set up all the parameters and my crown chakras all the way up to the angelic realm and my root chakra, and I've got my guardian angel nestled in my crown chakra and everyone there, I'm like, I still want to make sure. Um, so there are, but it's fun because when I'm channeling, I'm hanging out seeing wonderful visions while they're speaking. And I'm aware of what they're saying. I just have to make sure I don't interfere. I stay on the sideline. I don't try to jump in. People who trans channel, when I ask them, what, what's it like for you? What I hear back is either it was the most wonderful sleep I've ever had. You cannot imagine the best sleep ever, every time. Or they say, well, I'm, I'm out of my body and I see like maybe the angelic collective over there talking to you guys, but I'm at the other end of the room and it's dark and I'm getting private lessons that are just for me. Or they might say, well, I don't know what you all were doing, but I was taken on a fantastic adventure. So even a trans channel, they may be, you know, involved in some way with some kind of experience, not just unconscious. But it's all good. I mean, it's all great, however it's done. But there's also, you know, channeled writing, automatic writing. Um, there's when people do energy work, sometimes they'll invite, you know, benevolent beings to come and channel energy through them. Um, I once received an energy feel, healing from Ariel at Crystal Cognizance in Woodbridge, Virginia. Uh, we were doing a trade. So I had, I had done a past life reading for her, and then she did a channeled healing on me. The Elephant Collective and Jesus came through and channeled through her. Um, it was really amazing. and. To, and it was like receiving a hands-on healing from Jesus. It was really something. And when we were all done and I got in my car to go home, you know, I did my typical grounding and make sure I'm safe for the 45 minute or a half hour drive home. 
I picked up my keys to put in my ignition and my key ring exploded in my hand, like little bits of <coughs> key ring and all the keys fell to the floor of my car. I was like, oh yeah, I did my typical grounding, not my Jesus channeled energy healing grounding. <laughs> <laughs> so there were all different ways. I know uh, people who channel when they sing, who do channeled dance, like um, they're like weaving energy while they're dancing. Um, you know, in drum circles, we'll get visions and then sometimes, you know, our ancestors or, you know, the star people will come and speak through. Uh, so there are many, many, many ways to channel. I just want everyone to know that so that if you watch what I'm doing today and you're like, oh, I wish I could do that. Odds are you already do, just you may not realize it. Um, I used to write articles for magazines and I would wait and wait and wait. I'd try to write, try to write, I couldn't. And then I'm like, oh, it's due today. And I would sit down and I would write an entire beautiful article in under an hour. It would just flow through me. And then eventually I learned, I don't need to put myself to the point of panic, you know, and torture myself for days in order to do this. I could just do it like when the article's assigned. So, you know, that was, made my life less self-abusive. Um, while I'm channeling, I'm going to be really like, when the librarians are here, I'm going to be somewhere here where my hand is or a little further pulled into their collective. Um, it's very comfortable for me to channel the librarians because um, when I'm not in life, I work in the library. So they're, they're like my special family. They're my friends. When I was a child, my brother and sister and I used to go into the Akashic Library and we'd play. We'd play hide and go seek and tag and explore. And the librarians always looked out for us and gave us books to read. Um, so this is a very comfortable, special situation. When Jesus comes through, um, he will have specific messages for many of you in the room. He's not gonna say, he's not gonna point out, here's a message for you. Like, you you'll know in your heart, you'll know in your heart. Um, but he's already told me, like pretty much everyone here will get a special message. Um, I will, he likes to work with grids. So he'll come in and, you know, Mary the Brave will be with him, Mary Magdalene. Uh, he calls her like Mary the Bold, Mary the Brave. That's his name for her. Judas the Pure will be here. And just to make sure everyone knows, Judas never betrayed Jesus. That's just what the Bible said for political purposes. You know, oh my God, you have this trio of very powerful people. We'll make one a whore, make the other a betrayer. And then we get to like control the, you know, the, how people connect of this one. Um, so Judas Appear will be here, Archangel Michael, Metatron will be here, your man. Um, oh, he's been cleaning your house today with his angel army, your, your shop and your house. Yeah. yeah, and they're setting up some, they're setting up some grids. He's telling me, you still have to do the dusting, but, <laughs> but all your properties, your cars, all your properties, and all those who are in your care, be it animals, people, um, are getting this great stuff happening. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, so Jesus will come and he'll have a whole bunch of angels and archangels uh, with him. All right. He's telling me what to say. Um, they're going to activate everyone's guardian angels and your guides and your like non-physical friends and mentors. So while I'm in trance and they're speaking through me, feel welcome to invite your crown chakra to be open and your root chakra to be relaxed and flowing. And you may hear like little thoughts like, this is for you, or 
you might get like memories of your past and or like this is relevant or you know like you might get little downloads or messages so just receive them you know don't deny them going oh that's just me using my imagination don't do that receive them accept them thank them for the messages the more you connect back and let them know i hear you i accept what you're saying i thank you the more comfortable you know the connection can become and some of you may find that you're having some interesting experiences of your own you may go oh my god i spaced out i just lost the last 10 minutes of what jesus was saying don't worry i'll record it <laughs> it's really common so don't worry if that happens um sometimes they they're like your guides wait until your frequency is at a certain point so they can get through to you with messages or imprints or upgrades or healings that they've been trying to get but we're like blocking it we're like divine blocking um so since the frequency will be high and everyone here is a high frequency person you know be receptive to whatever happens all right um so today I took the wonderful dog Holden for like, I don't, we walked for an hour and a half and um, I was, my body was walking with Holden, who was so well behaved, did not chase a single bunny rabbit. So well behaved. <laughs> he was aware of everyone, in, but so well behaved. But my, um, my physical mind was aware of the walking my spirit mind was up in the library, chatting with the librarians, saying, okay, I'm a little nervous. Let's see what you can do to help me be calm because I'm a better conduit when I'm not stressed out. And, um, you know, so they were laughing at me, we were having fun and they were catching me up on what we're gonna talk about. And they feel it's very cyclic because, um, it's just over two years ago, two years and 10 days ago that they tried this the first time. So they're excited on how far we've evolved. And, you know, the, and they're saying this is the perfect group for tonight. So you all will be receiving energy that you'll be carrying forward in your lives. What? I don't know, but you'll know they know. Um, and then, you know, Jesus came through and he was goofing around and teasing me. He's got a great sense of humor. Be ready for that. The librarians think they have a great sense of humor. So like imagine sweet, like nerdy old guys who are in like a think tank and they're closed off from society. And then they get to come out and chat, <laughs> you know, like the guys from the big bang theory, you know, their jokes are just, I'm like, that's not funny. <laughs> So, um, uh, but they'll, if you forget to laugh, they'll let you know that was a joke. So, uh, <laughs> um, so anyway, after I was chatting with them, I was like, well, I'll just wander. You know, as long as I'm up here, I'll wander around. And I went into this one room. I said to them about when you mentioned about walk, they, and they said, oh yes, she asked for like, I think they said they thought you heard they heard you say books or some good some good reading. They dropped an entire well in their mind. No, they dropped more than one book. It was like no, it was like they dropped a wing of the library on you, but you absorbed like a trolley cart of books, and the rest were like dropped. They thought that was so funny, like. She said books. We heard her say books. <laughs> um, so I said to them, you know what? Give me a little of that experience. So there's this one hallway in the Akashic Records where the books are just floating around. They're like moving around and flying around. And when you walk through it, you let them know what it is you learn and the books come flying at you and then they absorb into you and an entire book goes into you at once it's one of my favorite halls because it's freaky as all get out 
like the third gym to the body is cheaper. Yeah. The third gym is not going to get any money. It's a lot like, yeah, yeah. It's amazing how many times people refer to the matrix when I talk about my life. <laughs> And, you know, I saw the first one when it first came out, and that's it. I'm going to have to watch it again. <laughs> so um, so I was walking down the hallway, and all these books are, like, flying and then absorbing it. And, and every time I'm like, oh, oh, oh. you know, so, <laughs> because books are flying at you. And it's so much fun because you get all this information at once, and you kind of go into the book, and the book is in you. It's, like, weird. Um and then um, I was like, oh, I've been working with Sasquatch lately. I've been, for the last couple of years, Sasquatch has been increasingly coming into my life. And when I'm with people who have full sight, sometimes they'll say, why is there a Sasquatch standing behind you? And I'm like, hey. <laughs> so until like today, I've been keeping my work with Sasquatch kind of on the down low, um, not for like embarrassment reasons, but just because I wanted to sort of get to know stuff and talk with experts without it being out there. So I'm like, oh, can I go into the Sasquatch Akashic Records? And this beautiful natural doorway opened up and they let me into the doorway of the foyer, the main reading room, and the Sasquatch came and they were hanging out with me. So we got a lot of Sasquatch here tonight. They were very excited and they said, oh good, we're gonna come and join in. So be ready for Sasquatch. And uh, I already loaded, um, I, I did a live stream on Facebook, and it'll be on my YouTube channel about the Sasquatch experience. It was pretty fun. Okay. Um, before we start, does anyone have questions? Okay. And...